Welcome to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norma Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. The future is so bright, I gotta wear shades. Oh, wow. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Hello, man. Anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review... How do I even title this one? The... My look. My Little Pony 2020. Vision. IDW 2020, but yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So, mm, um, synopsis is, in this comic, the main six accidentally gets sent to 20, really now, huh, 20 years into the past and team up with their younger selves in order to return to their own time period. Ooh. So, first impressions are in order and silver. What do you think, man? Well, you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but uh, I enjoyed seeing this just because it's cute to see the main six interacting with their younger selves. And, but it also raises that good old question of what would you do if you met your younger self? <laughs> uh, and uh, it's an interesting question to consider. Mm-hmm. You know, since you brought it up, what would you do, Silver? Mm, offer encouragement. Just say, look, whatever feels really bad right now will pass and seem smaller with distance. All right. And because if you try to warn yourself about other pitfalls, all you're going to do is ironically stress yourself out. That's true. That's true. So I think a little encouragement to say, hey, I'm doing... We're both doing well. That's really what they need. All right, all right. And Jacob, what about you? Well, this is awkward because, well, we started this podcast a bit uh, too early because mm-hmm. I got uh, notified a bit too late that we were going to review this. So uh, I may be a bit short on when we go through this coming, but. From what I read, uh, the comic is uh, pretty good, especially because, well, it's written by Ted, Ed- Ted Anderson, and he's one of those uh, writers to the IDW, Friendship is Magic, that have, well, uh, they're consistent with their work. There's, like, I, I... maybe one or maximum two uh, stories that he wrote that, well, didn't do too well. But other than that, he... This in the, in the 2020 issue is pretty good, and right. the art is done by Tony Cusisto, mm-hmm. uh, which is always awesome. <clears throat> as long as it's n- <laughs> well, what I've seen uh, about the Pie Sisters that is <laughs> Elseworld not canon. <laughs> but, but anywho, um, on to what Silver mentioned. If you were to meet your younger self, what would you say to him? Um, let's see. Uh, I honestly don't know what I would shoot say at this point. <laughs> I got nothing to be honest. Maybe by the end I'll figure it out, but that's it for now. I <laughs> right, stock up on toilet paper. One day you will be king. <laughs> Because that too is part of 2020. Oh, <laughs> that is true. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And as for me, I love this comic. This comic is the best. <laughs> oh, boy. But seriously, um, I, I love this comic. Uh, the story, the art, the-, the just everything about it is just so awesome. Uh, the interaction between characters, like... Uh, themselves, the interaction between their younger self and their older self, and the uh, it's just awesome. Like I, I, I don't know what to say. Like every time when I open up this comic and read it, I just enjoy it a lot. Like it gives me that good feeling, you know, that feeling. Peace. Mm-hmm. Oh, help. Help me, Agab. He's feeling. Feeling the peepees. <laughs> no. 
But, uh, feelings. Uh, Nothing more than feeling. Oh man, you, you sing that song, and every time I hear it, it reminds me of Eek the Cat. Ah, there's a classic. I know. Um, as for what would I say to my younger self? <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'll pass by him, go talk to my dad, and tell him to invest stock in Microsoft and Apple. Wow. So you you don't have time for your younger self because you're trying to make a fortune? Our family's fortune, yes. But no, um if I, I uh but it, joke answer is say that everything you know is wrong. Black is white, up is down, and short is long. Watch out for zebra crossings. Uh if anybody get that lyric they're awesome. <laughs> White is black and black is white. Right is wrong and wrong is right. Nothing ever filled this soul and hole inside what? your heart. What? Really? There's a song? All Hail Shadow. Um, you never uh, heard of that? Nah, man. I, I, I'm pretty uh, off because the one I'm thinking of is Everything you know is wrong. Black equals white is up, up. I can't sing. Throat is not there. <laughs> It's weird L stuff. Everything you know is wrong. <laughs> uh, go listen to it. It's fun. Anywho, comics. We, 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 we need to do stuff with them. Review them mostly. Anyway, if you have not read this... Yeah, go, go. what else do you do with your comics? If you're in Kara, you burn them. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, if you have not read this comic here, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Oh, Boy, we got an awesome page turner for you. So we start off with the comic with Rainbow Dash performing her air, awesome air stunts in the sky for the ambassador of Abyssinia. Did they say it? Because I, I I'm well, trying to remember. They're cat people. That is true, but at the same time too. <laughs> oh, I see. So all Abyss all cat people must come from Abyssinia. Really, Jakob. I find you not woke enough. <laughs> well, all the bird people come come from was that bird tree place. <gasps> oh, I am shocked and appalled. Birdopia. <laughs> oh man, you know you could just add the word topia to anything and it still works. <laughs> yeah. I can't even with you people. I can't even believe. <laughs> so not wokiness. I know. No, but uh, to be honest, the, the timeline is a bit really all over the place because um, if this is according to whatever idea of this timeline is, Abyssinia might not have an ambassador. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of busy re rebuilding from being conquered. Yeah. So, anywho... That doesn't uh, mean they don't have ambassadors. That's true, but at the same time, too, are they? Yeah. I mean... Just filler places or something, you know. Uh, not yaks. Yaks are not impressed by this. Hippogriffs, probably. Well, the the yaks sent their ambas their prince as an ambassador, and he nearly declared war on the whole thing. And I'm still waiting for Celestia to kick him in the tushy. <laughs> you, you mean in the? Never mind. Moving on. So as oh my, as Norman, as Rainbow Dash performs her flight, uh, it starts to rain. And it starts to rain pretty heavily, and there's a bit of a thunderstorm. So Applejack gets a bit um, worried about this because, hey, that's not good. Like if something bad, something bad might happen to uh, Rainbow Dash. And we see Rainbow Dash performing her flying stunts and getting ready for her final move, which is going to be the Sonic Rain Boom. But at the same time, to dodging lightning, and she needs to finish this fast. She needs to finish this fast. So, uh, she performs the sonic rain boom, and at the same time when she hits max velocity, boom, she gets hit with a lightning bolt. And, well, many years ago, which is barely 20 years ago, I guess, we see the past where the moment where Rainbow Dash performs her sonic rain boom, or before she performs her sonic rain boom, uh, we see uh, her being bullied by the bullies, uh, we see Applejack in Manhattan. Manhattan, right, Silver? Uh, yeah. Right, She's just now realizing she should go home. 
And Fluttish Eye is underground underneath Ponyville, I'm assuming. I hope so, yeah. I guess. And then Twilight, uh, with her exam, uh, Pinkie Pie at the Rock Farm, and so on. Uh, sorry, since I already mentioned. Um, with Rarity looking at a dumb rock. So, at the moment where she hits Sonic Green Boom, suddenly, we see all the ponies there. We, we see Rainbow Dash, uh, all the Rainbow Dash with young Rainbow Dash, and so on. The one that I'm very awe and impressed is with... Um, Twilight, because she popped up at the exam where uh, her parents are just mouth of gaps. So, <laughs> they, um, they they all are confused. Like, wait, what? Where where am I? Uh, th- this is where we first got our cutie mark. Like, how, how did we even got here? And the interaction between um, young ponies and older ponies are fun. Uh, we have, like, what, Twilight seeing her younger self and, like, oh, wow, uh, I was so small. Uh, Rainbow Dash saying, um, an imposter, get away from me! And Fluttershy is crying and hugging a tree because she's scared of the older pony in front of her. And Applejack's fighting with each other. <laughs> and Pinkie Pie... <sighs> Pinkie Pie seems to take this so well that she even can tell that it's a temporal distortion and uh, it's some type of quantum Krillian cr- cr- attraction. What yeah. the hell does that even mean? I don't know. Some sort of multi multifocal <laughs> reflecting thing? I don't know. No, it's, a, it's basically Krillin is responsible. <laughs> Krillin, everyone's friend. <laughs> Pwn counter. <laughs> And the best interaction is Rarity. <laughs> Rarity is just like, wait, you look divine, you look awesome, you look beautiful. I'm you from the future. The gasp. <laughs> I'll be that good looking. And Rainbow Dash says that, I'm you from the future, idiot. Really? <laughs> How am I sure that you're not some kind of imposter? Because I'm awesome. Yes, you are. <laughs> and we get the interaction and that's fun. And we, we get the general gist of, wow, young self is impressed with older self, and we head to Ponyville. So I'm gonna pause here. So what do you guys think, man? So far, so good. Uh, Silver? I find it just hilarious for Fluttershy and Applejack. They really don't get along with their past selves. I, I mean, Fluttershy is not that bad. I mean, she she's kind of wary and scared, but still, she's gonna get a tummy ache because of she's, she's Fluttershy says so herself. Yeah, because she's yelling. Ah. Don't scream! We get tummy aches when we scream. How do you know that? Ah, oh, stranger danger! Stranger danger! <laughs> oh boy! Oh, but I love you, man. Well, honestly, Sorry. I I feel like that's the. Appropriate response when you see a strange-looking pony who resembles you. You have a right to scream and be freaked out. Mm-hmm. It makes far more sense than Applejack going to Manhattan as a filly, unescorted, <laughs> and walking the streets at night. Yes, I'm hung up on that. <laughs> uh, remember when we say timeline, how far Manhattan is to Ponyville? Don't care. Apparently she can run the whole way. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys. So, carrying on. We, we see that um, Twilight is explaining the situation to Princess Celestia. And Princess Celestia says, Oh, um, we got uh, five other ponies who were sent back in time. And saying that, Oh, uh, they're my friends. And uh, Celestia says, Okay, you need to find them. And, uh, and do you have any ideas? Twilight just says, if they're my friends, they'll be heading to Ponyville. And we, we get to see small Twilight be impressed with, or just analyzing big Twilight. Like, ooh, you got wings, you're taller than me. Oh, wow, uh, are, are you powerful and whatnot? Like, ooh. <laughs> and um, we, we see here that, okay, uh, Celestia just says, okay, I'll get a chariot for you to go there. And Twilight just says, no, 
nah, man. I got this babies. I can go there myself. <laughs> and, uh, so this is just says, um, I'm not gonna ask. Sorry, before that, like, uh, you, you, you got baby Twilight here. She needs to follow too, so Chariot it is. But I'm not even gonna ask how you got those. We don't need to start a new time paradox here. And with that, uh, they hit to Ponyville via Chariot. Pleb. <laughs> and uh, Small Twilight just asked a few questions about, oh wow, um, you're so let's say student in the future and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And she comments that, oh, you have wings. You must be a princess then. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, what are we? Princess of Magic, book, books or organization? And Big Twilight just says, nah, we're just the princess of friendship. And Little Twilight just says, you're kidding me, right? That can't be right. I, I don't have friends. You don't need friends to learn and make discoveries, right? I mean, right? And Big Twilight just... Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> yep, so wrong you are. And Big Twilight just says, one day you'll learn that friendship is important and the power of friendship can do a lot of things. Trust me on this. So the rich to Ponyville, they meet up with their uh, friends and just gather together. And it seems that in the middle of Ponyville, or of all places, there seems to be a rift in time where they need to kind of mend it and go back through it. But uh, one thing they forgot to mention or notice is that, oh, uh, our elements, they're missing. And I'm trying to remember, did they wear their elements? With? Yep, they did. Yeah. So their elements of harmony are missing and they need to gather it to uh, repair the rift. And one of the fun lines here is just, oh my god, Egghead's now in stereo. <laughs> oh boy. So, continuing on. We, we see that, okay, um, it seems that when we got pulled into the portal, our elements got separated from us, so we need to find them. And... Uh, Rarity and Twilight uh, cast their uh, gem-finding spell and head off to separate directions to find them. Young Rarity sees this and like, oh wow, uh, you got a gem-finding spell? Wow, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, now they split into two teams and find their elements. And the team composition is very interesting. Uh, for the adults, on one team, we get Twilight, Applejack, and Pinkie Pie. For the kids, we got Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Rarity. On the other team, Team B, I'm going to call. For the adults, we got Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Rarity, kids, Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Applejack. Oh, basically the same thing, but different. Anyway, so uh, the lot of them try to get along with each other, trying to talk about stuff. And Twilight just says, should we really be talking? I mean, this should, by us talking, we might cause a time paradox, and that's not good. And Pinkie Pie just says, ah, phooey, uh, that don't matter. Uh, we're going to be friends in the future, so why not get a head start? Yay, I like logic. Yay. And they, they kind of... Uh, get a talking and try to be well. They're they're a bit logical. Like, huh? I grew up on a farm, and I'm going to be friends with a stunt flyer, a fashionista, and a princess. Huh? I did not saw that coming. And yeah, uh, they 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 talk about how uh, their differences make them friends and whatnot and so on. And yeah. Th- the, the interaction is really cool. The reason why I'm going really fast and not really t- talking by details is if I do, it'll take a really long time. And if I'm doing that, you're going to miss enjoying it for yourself. So I'm just going to go fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> uh, next hurdle is they find one of the elements under a bear. And we got to see the kids planning stuff like, okay, I'm going to go attack the bear and distract it and stuff, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, Pinkie Pie says, I've got to go strike into a power cannon. And Twilight says, no, that's dangerous. I need to analyze this. Think, 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 think. And while they do that, the adults are just, well, doing it. We see that Rarity is hovering a bee's nest, honey, and uh, attracting the bear, going far away. Rainbow Dash flies in and grabs the, what you call this, element of harmony, and Fluttershy is nowhere to be seen. Wait, what? Well, as far as I can tell, she's the she's the one who instructs. Check that check that uh, second panel on the page. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's the I, one pointing out what everyone should do. Okay, but still that that didn't really pan out because on the third panel, oh, it's wrong, um, second third on the fourth panel, she's gone. You you would have thought that yeah, she's she she would have she's supervising. We you would have thought that she was the one. Talking to the bear, saying, Excuse me, Mr. Bear, uh, could you move a bit? I need to grab my stuff. Thank you. But no, she's gone. <laughs> and now yeah, you have. I, I found it strange that uh, they didn't go with plan A for just that. I know. But they, they need to teach a lesson that uh, it takes a whole team to do it, uh, to do uh, something awesome. So I, I guess. I guess. And they say that, oh, wow, how did you do it? And Rainbow just says, we do it together. And uh, Rarity just says, um, no one is uh, no one is as smart or as tough or as fast as all of us. And if we work together, we can be 20% better. <coughs> so, they gather their, what you call this, um, elements and head back and the kids are enjoying themselves they're they're really enjoying the uh, road trip i'm guessing and we see why applejack has eyes for rarity because she thinks she's awesome the ship makes sense it's been implanted in her since a young age (laughs) subconsciously Anyway, let's head to the other team. So the other team, <coughs> they technically they do the same thing. They talk about how uh, they work together, how by having friends they're awesome and whatnot. And mostly this is just uh, for the reasons why Ponyville is their home base. Because uh, what you call this, Rar- Young Rarity just says like, Huh, what's so special about Ponyville? I mean, my oldest self said this place was special. Frankly, I thought this place was a bit of a backwater. And we we see that Rainbow Dash says, yeah, yeah i never been on the ground, so how did I end up grounded? And yeah, they just say that friends, friends made you set home base here. But not really, right? Because when we... Look at season one, episode one. We knew that Fluttershy was kind of the animal caretaker kind of person, right? Kind of. I mean, everyone lived there, but then there was sort of a retcon in that saying they were all friends before Twilight arrived. I mean, they're acquaintances. Like, I, I, I always kind of viewed them as acquaintances more than out and out friends. It, you know, they all started to get to know each other after they re- after they saved the day. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt that too because, like, if you're living in a town, a small town, you you got to know everybody, especially if you have quote unquote jobs. Everybody's got to know Pinkie Pie <laughs> because she's the quote unquote baker and she's very friendly. Uh, Rainbow Dash is the weather pony of Ponyville, so she's I guess she got transferred there, so that makes logical sense. So the shy. Likes animals, and I guess living near Ponyville gives her that. I'm not sure about Rarity. How did she even get there? Didn't she technically mm, well, live in Ponyville? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, how did she even got there? Because by this, um, they're saying that they don't really need f- live in Ponyville. Like, they live further away. 
Well, all she's saying is that she regards Ponyville as kind of a backwater. Mm -hmm. So it could be that she lives there, but she just doesn't have a high opinion of it. I guess. I guess. Hmm? So, yeah, carrying on. Um, Twilight just says, Ponyville is just right for me. Uh, The friends here uh, shape my... uh, Just, let's just say, friends are awesome. I make this my home, and uh, it shaped me to be who I am. Until some jerk blew up where I was living, and then I became a princess of friendship. I still want my books. Do you know how rare they are? But anywho, uh, Rainbow Dash, or Young Rainbow Dash, is just like, oh no, if I'm stuck in Ponyville, that means I don't get to fly everywhere. And... Uh, Pinkie Pie just says, "Nah, we go everywhere. We we, we go to, uh, we we go to uh, adventures, big, small, dangerous, not dangerous, whatever, and we we do a lot of stuff. Sometimes scary. And Sasha is scared, and Pinkie Pie just says, "No worry, as long as your friends are by your side, nothing." You, uh, there, there's nothing that you can't do. So, yay. And hearing that, uh, Rainbow Dash sees the uh, crown and goes for it. And before <laughs> Twilight can warn her, she gets tangled up in some vines. And, yep. <laughs> uh, Rainbow Dash has to say, like, oh, sorry, um, Applejack says, like, oh, so she's always been that way, huh? So the group teams up to formulate a plan to rescue Rainbow Dash. Uh, Ray, uh, Ray, sorry, Twilight tells Applejack to kick down the tree so that she can reach up to her, and Pinkie Pie unties knots. Yay! So uh, she does that and saves Rainbow Dash. And Rainbow Dash is impressed, and they tell that. They, they they pound the idea that um, as long as if with your, as long as you are with your friends, you can do almost anything, and that's why um, Rainbow Dash told uh, her young Rainbow Dash to team up with uh, Fluttershy because she knew you could both use some pony you know around. So yay, that's awesome on them. And now let's head back to Ponyville. Where they put on their um, elements of harmony, necklace and crown, and blast magic into the rift. But it seems that that's not enough. And with the help of their younger self, they have enough magic to boost the portal or boost the rift open. And uh, let's see. The, the kids here want to know more about the future, but. The adults say that, nah, man, we, we, we need to... We, we can't really tell you. Spoilers. You know, spoilers and whatnot. But know that as long as you guys are together, you can do almost anything. And Except communicate effectively. That's also true. Uh, and also, um, Twilight here doesn't really know how to kind of settle the whole time paradox thing. And Celestia comes in saying that, I do. And we need to take care of one last precaution. And that is, I need to seal away your memories. This is the only safe way. I'm sorry. Uh, Rainbow Dash is not getting getting it. It's not having fun. So this spell, basically what it does is, seal this moment in time away from uh, their subconscious memories. But only for it to end when the ponies go through the portal. And with that, they all say their goodbye, say their word of encouragement, and we see them hit into the portal and come back to the future. And once that happens, oh. at 88 miles per hour, <laughs> we. With 1.21 gigawatts. Yeah. Also, we believe all the time you want me stuff. It's bigger on the inside. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Oh boy. So anywho, um, they pop in, they say they're back, and suddenly, they remember everything. What? <laughs> they remember everything? Oh, what? And they, they... So I guess I really was right in that case. Because I remember way back, ooh, I don't know much, I forgot which issue you were viewing, uh, Norman. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned that with the interview 2020, I just made the stab in the dark when you said that they travel back in time. But for some reason, they don't. Tr- nothing's changed. And then I just blurted out that they probably forgot. So yeah, this was alluding to this part. Mm. Yes. <laughs> but but anywho, um, uh, Celestia says, yeah, I, I mentioned the, the spell I cast on you guys when you return back to the future, you'll remember everything. So, um, uh, Princess Celestia says, okay, um, what did you learn from meeting your younger self? Rainbow Dash says, like, I have learned that I've always been awesome. And Pinkie Pie says, I've learned I've always need conditioner. <laughs> and Twilight has a more uh, something more intellectual, I, I would say, that your friends... Profound? Yeah, profound, thank you. That your friends are always your friends, even before you met them. What? Twilight, what the... How? What? Be my friend. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, God. The end, but... Oh. I, I, I guess... In context, that makes sense. But out of context, if you want to make that as a quote, that makes no sense. <laughs> well, think about the Kimar Chronicles. They... They even said then there's a bond uniting friends even before they've met. I guess. But. Uh, maybe I'm nitpicking. Anyway, coming in. Yay! Awesome! Silver final thoughts. <clears throat> well, this is just sort of a fun romp. It's not exactly high stakes. It's not like Inquestria is going to explode if they don't get these back in a certain time. It's more just a reflection on the times they've shared, the unlikely but strong bond that they forged, and the fact that Fluttershy is cute no matter what era. Indeed. I mean, I'm I'm not saying it. I'm not uh, claiming any lack of bias here. So if Fluttershy is cute, your argument is invalid. That's also true. I totally agree with you, man. Anything else to add? Uh, well, let's see here. I guess this sort of... It's kind of funny that this could explain a lot about Celestia knowing things in advance. But I feel like what she knows is very limited because if they have, a, if they have an off-screen conversation, then... That's cheating, because the audience doesn't know that. But yeah, I, I guess that makes sense because knowing what she knows by seeing, quote unquote, the future, like the path that I'm going now is the correct one, and I should follow it. Yeah, she's kind of got that assurance that, well, if they're this old and that they and that they're wielding the elements of harmony, and all that good stuff. Must mean that my plan to save Luna worked. Good for me. I deserve a vacation. <laughs> yeah. When Prince, when she comes out, she's going to lock me away. I think it's never been established, right? Well, so you're never quite sure of how much Celestia really knows. She's playing vague. She she's being vague. Like she's playing the oh she she plays her, her cards close to the chest. Mm. And she has that strong poker face, man. Like, when, when you play poker with her, you got no idea. Like, oh, God, no. Shh. Is it weird that now I want to hear Celestia singing poker face? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Brooklyn Rage. Can't beat my, can't beat my, can't beat my po- Brooklyn Rage. I don't want to be a furry. Oh, wait, I shouldn't say that. Bronies are discount furries. <laughs> 
I mean, you're singing a song. But anywho, uh, is that still? Nye, 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 nye. Uh, yep, that's it uh, for me. Jacob, what do you have to say, man? Well, I... Uh, <laughs> considering how quickly we fl- uh, flew through this whole thing, well, there were a few minor uh, nitpicks, but they're not really that important. Like, for example, uh, no, you know what? I'm just not. I'm not gonna go into this. Overall, the comic was uh, pretty good. As Silver said, there's no, just not really high stakes situation here. But well, friendship is magic. Basically, works best when it's in these kind of situations. All right. That all? Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's just about it. All right. And as for me, I feel what makes this comic work is the stakes. It's technically a slice of life issue, where you they technically they portray it as this high stakes. Uh, if they don't do this right. Uh, everything will go bad and stuff. But in all honesty, it's just a slice of life. And technically a uh, recap show, just saying that, uh, or just explaining to the audience that um, we're awesome because we're friends and here's why. But the thing that makes it work is the interaction between the older ponies and the younger ponies. That's what makes it work because uh, Ted, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, the dinosaur, yeah. yeah. Ted. Ted here really knows how to bring out the best in the characters when, in terms of writing and in terms of how he words stuff. And Tony here, his art style really works for this and kind of exudes that sense of how they put this uh, it exudes this sense of childlike wonder I, I don't know I mean it's just awesome looking at his art looking at the interaction and just seeing things work like you get to see Applejack arguing with herself like um, th- those two ponies have this this similar angry face and then you can see that um, Pinkie Pie carrying small pinky on her head um, like sh- Younger Pinky is just like so excited about her theories and stuff. Like she knows, she knows stuff that's not supposed to be known. Uh, like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. And older Pinky is just like, mm-hmm, yep, I know, mm-hmm. And she she's been through this and whatnot. And younger Rarity and like I, I'm going through the comic again, but it, it, it's just those things where you get to see the excitement, you get to see the. Younger ponies being in awe of their older self. And later on, you get to see um, them interacting with their other friends, older counterparts. We, we, we see that uh, the what Applejack, Twilight, and Pinkie Pie uh, try to plan something, but see that the older ponies got it just because they're friends and they work together. Uh, same goes for the other one. And because of that, we, we see that this is going to be awesome for them. Like, the future is going to be bright for them. And that's, I guess, that what makes it fun. Because when they go back and they start their life, we know that the kids are going to have a awesome future waiting for them. And they just need to do their own thing, be their best. <sighs> also, when I read this comic, I shed a little tear when they say goodbye. Oh. Well, except they don't, because then they become themselves. I know, but it's all very zen. I know, but take a look see it. Baby Fluttershy, like, saying goodbye and crying, and then, like, Pinkie Pie and Rarity. I mean, that, that is... Tony really knows how to pull at the heartstrings, man. There is just one thing that anyway. makes me wonder about this issue. Mm-hmm. Why is one it... One thing? 
why is it called 2020? Uh, silver? Because hindsight is always 2020. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew there was something. And also, we're trying our best to forget 20 freaking 20. Silver. This comic came out this, in wow. January 23rd of 2019. Yeah. <laughs> it was predicting how much we need, want to forget 2020. <laughs> now, um, serious answer is because this was IDW's uh, 2020 comic lineup where, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, <clears throat> let me double check because I do remember uh, it was the whole company that uh, was doing this. Uh, you had the ponies, I think what, celebrating 20 years with IDW. I, I think that's the reason. IDW has been running for 20 years now. So you, you got things like uh, the Ghostbusters, Gem and the Hologram, Star Trek, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, with each issue being at least 20 years into the properties, future or past, something like that. That's what I'm reading here. And yeah... I got no idea what the story is going to be like for those comics, but we at least now know with ponies. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there you have it. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that the IDW is going down the drain. I don't. <laughs> no comment. We shall see. Anyway. I, I guess that's about it because uh, I, I said my piece and uh, there, there was uh, there was a huge piece. Uh, I, 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 like I mentioned before, I like this comic. This comic feels good. Uh, anyway, um, let's wrap it up. <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimishagmail.com or you can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and the YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. They also contain links to my Patreon and Ko-fi, which will, can support my, well, lots of things. After the fact, weekday puns, Pinkie Pie says goodnight, all this good stuff. Awesome, awesome. Go do so. I'm guessing if they have a suggestion for you, they can reach you on your Patreon, I guess? Yeah, you can contact me through Patreon or uh, Twitters. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can reach out. Next suggestion is Silver Quill. Play video games and record yourself playing them. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Everybody's doing I that. I know. I even <laughs> fall for that trap. <laughs> trap? What do you mean, trap? It's a trap. Oh, it's a trap. Oh, my God. Everybody's doing it. So did I. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> oh, boys. Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're reading... An uh, if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in my dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so. And if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review, discussion, podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, Master of Flag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I'm Jakob. And we'll catch you guys next week with a another episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs> 20 years into the future or past, we get pwned we get the main six meeting their younger self. My prediction for the future is the G5 ponies meeting with the G4 ponies. Oh, God, no. And the G4... One day, perhaps. And the G4 ponies Please are going to kick ass and be awesome and show that this is why we rock and you don't. But Twilight, what happened? Oh. Or 
Well, that's just it. They'll they'll uh, warn the G4 ponies who will avoid the catastrophe, and thus G5 will be rendered moot. And then you're like, no, Snake, you've created a time paradox. I think that's... paradox. Yeah, I think people are going to enjoy that. <laughs> ah!